Yeah, today we'll continue with that uh, bolted connection. So the B channels are placed back to back. Okay. These are now bolted connection. Okay. So here <coughs> bolts are subjected to bolts are subjected to double shear. Isn't it when two members are bolted, there will be a single shear. If three members are bolted, it will be double shear. So here bolts are subjected to two plates and the channel flange. So it is subjected to two places the shear. So it is subjected to the transverse force subjected to double share okay In page number 75 of is 800 class number 10.3.4 they have given the bearing capacity capacity of bolted connection first we calculate shear strength then we calculate the bearing strength shear strength it is given vd sp equals to f u b divided by root 3 r o into 1.78 into pi d square by 4 where R M O this is where R M O is partial factor of safety. So you know partial factor of safety R M O equal to one point two five. We take it as one point two five. So F U B is nothing but ultimate tensile strength of the bolt tensile strength of bolt so vdsb equal to vdsb equal to 400 divided by root 3 into 1.410 actually 1.25 into 1.78 into pi into 16 square by 4 this is the dia of bolt okay so this comes to the shear strength comes to the shear strength <coughs> equal to 66 point one two. Now calculate the bearing capacity. Capacity. The bearing capacity V D F B equal to. It is given in the code page number seventy five. K B D into T into F U divided by R M O. 2.5 into 1 into D is the diameter of the bolt. T is the thickness of the plate into 410 divided by 1.25. I'll divide by 1000 so that directly I'll get in the kilonewtons. I'll get 157.44 kilonewtons. Okay. Now, next is, once we calculate these two values, what is the bolt value? Bolt value is least of about two. 
so it is 66.12 kilo newton and 157.44 kilo newton so least of that is 60 so that is 66.12 this is the bolt value bolt strength least we have to consider then number of bolts number of bolts is nothing but whatever the compressive force get on the lacing okay divided by the bolt value so you'll get 0 0.29 we cannot provide 0 0.29 bolt so it is one bolt is provided so provide provide one bolt of dia diameter 16 mm of grade of grade 4.6 this is the way we design a bolt so we have done the lacing we have done the bolted connection now the next step is design of tie plate what is this tie plate the end plates which are provided to the lacing they are called the tie plates that are nothing but battens only a horizontal plate is provided so tie plate must be provided tie plate must be provided at end of laced column okay at the end of the laced column now referring page number 51 and class number 7.7.2.3 the first thing you have to calculate is effective depth depth and thickness of the plate if you know the depth and thickness we will provide it isn't it so effective depth is given how to calculate the effective depth so effective depth it's given in the page number 51 okay 7.7.2.3 i'll read out when plates are used for battens the end battens and those at the points where the members is stayed in its length shall have effective depth longitudinally not less than perpendicular distance between centroids of the main member so the end type plate is effective depth is nothing but centroid between centroidal distance centroidal distance between main members main member okay that should be greater than two times the width of the flange so center to center distance is 133 plus two times the value cyy okay the cyy value two times cyy say this is the yes isn't it this is the c so this distance is central distance between the main member 1.183 plus 2 times the c y y that's what i'm putting here this should be greater than two times the width of the flange that is 90 okay 
So I'll substitute it 183 plus 2 into 23.6 should be greater than 180. That is 230 is greater than 180. So it is okay. <coughs> the total depth. Second point is not, not the thickness, the still we are in the defect. Depth total depth required. Required total depth required equal to effective depth plus to end distance there will be end distance for the bolt so the two times the end distance we have to consider so it is 230 230 plus 2 times 1.5 times the 18 okay 16 plus 2 18 so it comes to 284 approximately 290 so this is the depth of the plate once you got the depth of the plate what will be the thickness of the plate so thickness of breadth of the plate second thing is breadth of the tie plate equal to breadth so this is total depth we have calculated now breadth is a thickness minimum thickness we provide okay so here breadth we have to take so this is the bearing plate okay now this becomes the depth and then breadth okay so here it is given in Class number 7 in the same class, the effective depth and width, page number 51 of IS 800, 2007. Okay, so here the, the effective depth of the pattern shall be taken longitudinal between the outermost bolt riveted or welded at the end. The thickness of the pattern of type plate not less than the 150th, 150th of distance between the intermost connecting lines of the rivets or bolt. So the intermost connecting is nothing but 183 plus 2G. What is G? G is the gauge distance gauge distance for a given ISMC 300 okay for that it is nothing but already we have used it it comes to 5.66 so approximately provide 6 volts so the figure <laughs> this is the end this is the connecting side the other side so three boards here and three boards here we have connected okay so that is the so provide provide six boards 
of 16 mm diameter for this completes the tie plate how to design a tie plate and how the number of bolts you had to design how the effective depth and breadth using class number 7.7.2.3 of page 51 of is 800 okay. now then coming to the case b we have done case a when the channel sections are back to back now case b here in the case b the both the channels are face placed face to face this is the one so this is the c y y distance i'll take the distance from edge to edge as yes okay now design of column with two channels placed toe to toe so the channels are placed toe to toe or it can be called as face to face okay to calculate the s distance okay the condition already we have designed this the condition is i x x should be equal to i y y so here we know i x x value 6362.6 into 10 raised to 4 equal to i y y is 301 uh, 0.8 into 10 raised to 4 okay uh, plus 4 5 6 4 s by 2 minus of 23.6 cyy value whole square that gives me the i by y from this i'll get s value as 277.5 say 280 mm is the distance from end to end now the same method is the lacing provided here already we have done so this becomes the repetition so assuming inclination first thing is assume the inclination of the lacing inclination is 45 degrees for lacing then we know g value is 50 okay so compressive force therefore compressive force on lacing Lacing is given as S by N, the same formula what we have used for the last case. So the same value will get 19.44 kilo newtons. Okay. Now, again, minimum width of the bearing plate and thickness of the bearing plate, we have to use the same formulas. So referring class number 7.6.2 of page number 50 of IS 800 okay so when you refer this so minimum width is nothing but three times minimum width of lacing plate equal to 3d that is 3 times the diameter of the board say 48 mm across
approximately 50 mm. Now, minimum thickness, the same steps what we used with the back to back channels is nothing but 1 by 40th of into effective length into second 45. If you calculate this, you will get 6.36 mm. We won't get 6.36 mm thickness, say 8 mm thickness. Okay. Now, we we'll put a statement that the size of the placing provide provide a lacing provide a lacing flat of size 50 into 8 mm so we have provided the lacing so this is the channel facing face to face okay you have the lacing like this Okay. Now, we have to check the load carrying capacity of the lacing, whether it takes the whatever the compressive force which comes on it. So, for that, again the same steps, how to calculate the R minimum, we have discussed already. We got the formula. After substituting a root of I by A, we get T by root 12. So here thickness is 8, 8 divided by root 12. In last class it was 12. Here it is 8, 2.309 mm. Calculate the KL by R minimum. This should be less than 145. This is the main concept of the lacing. Lacing slenderness ratio should be less than 145 to be safer so we calculate this okay 280 minus 50 the length minus 50 into secant 45 divided by r minimum is 2.309 you will get 110.25 which is less than 145 so safe so what we have provided the lacing is safe which carries the compressive force which comes on it now this is the radius gyration is safe still we have to check it so referring table as we do for the column same way referring to table 10 Page number 44, the buckling classes, the built up section. So, for the built up section, the buckling class is C. So, refer table, refer table 9C to get the FCD value. We have to take 110 the slenderness ratio what is fcd and 120 what is the value of fcd 110 it is 94.6 for 120 it is 83.7 i require for 110.24 the fcd value equal to 94.36 newton per and then square then load carrying capacity load carrying capacity of 
lacing bar equal to K into FCD. Kg into FCD. Here is the area of the plate. That is nothing but 50 into 8. FCD is 94.36. You will get 37.74 kN which is greater than the load which comes on it. Compressive load is 19.44 kN. Therefore, it is safe. So, once you design, just check for the safe way uh, compression, whether it's safe in the compression or not. So, we have checked it. It is safe in the compression. Now, then tensile capacity of tensile capacity of lacing flat okay so this is given agfy by rmo that is partial safety factor equal to 0.7 au and the fu divided by rml if you substitute the value this is 50 into 8 is the gross area into 250 fy is 250 divided by 1.1 is the partial safety factor divided by 1000 I will do to get in kilonewtons or point, so 0.9 this is so 0.9 into 50 minus the whole into thickness is 8 into 410 divided by 1.25 into 1000 if you take this is 90.9 kilonewton or 75.57 kilonewton which is again greater than 19.44 kilonewton so this is safe okay now we design the bolted connection for this design of bolted connection okay similar there is no difference what we have done back to back the same thing so same steps repeated as we as we done in done in channels are done in case a i'll write where two channels sections are placed back to back the same steps are followed of the design that is V D S B we will get 66.12 then V D S B we will get 104 point in bearing this is in share this is in bearing okay so number of bolt we will get least of this will be the bolt value okay force divided by bolt value you will get the number of rivets that is one same steps are repeated here then design of design of tie plate okay design of type it in this case where channels are provided face to face the same stuff first term is effective depth then thickness only two things you have to calculate so effective depth effective depth equal to 
to 80 minus 2 times that is s minus s minus 2 times e y y this should be greater than 2 times the bf so c y y is 23.6 should be greater than 2 times the 90 I'll get it is 232.8 is greater than 180, so it is safe or okay. Now, still I have to do uh, overall depth. This is effective depth. Then, overall depth. Overall depth equal to two thirty two point eight the effective depth plus two times the end bearing I have taken so I'll get two nine two point eight say approximately three hundred mm then thickness of the plate thickness of plate or breadth of the plate okay if you take it is 1 by 50th of the spacing that is nothing but uh, you will get 3.6 mm say 5 so thickness of plate is 5 mm so length of plate is 280 length of plate equal to 280 okay so provide provide tie plate 280 mm, okay, 280 into 300 into 5 mm on both the ends the ends with the same step so 6 bolts you will get 6 bolts if you design of bolts 6 bolts of 16 mm diameter So this is tie plate. Three rivets this side. Sorry, bolts, three bolts this side. Okay. So this is the tie plate we have provided. Now case C we will discuss the case C of the problem. What is case C? Lacing, lacing system with welded connection, welded connection, the lacing with welded connection, okay. Electric channel sections. Back to back, back to back. You know the spacing of that spacing of channel is 183 mm. Okay, then compressive force on it, compressive force. In lacing is lacing patty is nineteen point four four five kilonewton. Okay, so referring clause number number seven point six 
6.3 page number 50 so 7.6 point 6.3 It is given thickness of lacing bar, okay, then uh, the effective length of the lacing is also given. See the effective length of the lacing uh, is given as 6.6.6. .6 .6 3 yes this slenderness ratio is given it should be less than 1.5 in order then the other thing is the length between the inner and end fastens of the bar for a single lacing as 0 0.7 0 0.7 of this length for double lacing effectively connected at the intersection in welded connection so you have to take effective length effective length of lacing flat welded okay that is 0 0.7 times 183 into second 45 which is nothing but 181.16 mm If you refer the class seven point six point three thickness of lacing, referring class seven point six point three that gives the thickness minimum thickness minimum thickness okay of lacing flat is 1 by 40th of the effective length that is 181.16 it comes to 4.53 that is 5 mm so provide provide lacing provide lacing 50 into 5 provide lacing flat I will write 50 into 5 mm okay so this is required now we check for the radius of variation okay now R minimum root of I by A. So, same thing we do here T by root 12. So, 5 divided by root 12, we get it as 1.443 mm. Then KL by R minimum that is slenderness ratio ratio equal to now the effective length is 181.16 divided by 1.443 that is nothing but 125.54 mm so this is the radius of the we know the buckling class buckling class you see referring refer table 9c the lambda value for 120 it is 83.7 for 130 it is 74.3 so 125.54 the fcd value is 78.49 newton per mm square
once we get this the load carrying capacity capacity equal to area 50 into 5 into fcd that equal to 19.62 kilo newton which is greater than 19.44 kilo newton now we also check for the tensile capacity tensile tensile capacity the same formula ag fy divided by r m o r 0.9 times a u f u divided by r m l <coughs> That is 50 into 5 into 250 divided by 1.1 divided by 1000 to convert into kilonewton or 0.9 times. Okay. 50 into 5 into 410 divided by 1.25 into 1000. You will get it as 56.81 kilonewton or 73.8 kilonewton, which is greater than 19.44 kilonewton. So, see. Okay. Now we do welded connection for this. So, welded. So thickness of flange, we require this thickness of flange of ISMC 300 at 35.8 kg per meter is nothing but 13.6 mm. So in page number 78, table 21, if you consider, okay, minimum size of first run or of single run fillet well, it is given, okay. Um, so minimum size of weld, according to table minimum size of weld you refer the table you will get minimum size of weld for the thickness is thickness of 13.6 it is 5 mm then maximum size of weld is nothing but uh, uh, thickness of lacing that is nothing but that is also 5 mm. Okay. Now, strength of weld. Strength of weld is given 0.7. In the same class, it is given 0.7 DFU divided by root 3 into 1.25. So, if you substitute the value you will get the strength of weld as 0 0.663 kilo newton per mm so required weld required weld equal to force divided by strength strength of the weld so the force coming on it is 19.445 divided by 0 0.663 you will get the length of weld as 29.33 mm this gives me the length the total length of weld total length of weld will be The required length what we have calculated LW plus 2 times the end returns. 
you know this why we calculate like 29.33 plus 2 times 5 into 2 you will get 49.33 okay now provide the well okay. yeah therefore provide 100 mm weld length okay 100 mm weld length at both ends at both ends okay so we can provide it has come to 49.50 so both ends we provide the 100 mm then coming to type plate type plate same as in case a bolted connection okay so overall depth you will get 300 then effective depth you will get it as 230.2 mm the length you will get as 363 mm so thickness as 6 mm okay so provide tie plate provide tie plate of 363 into 306 at the end both the end. so this completes the problem okay which includes the three cases one is channel section face to face then channel section back to back both are welded connections then C part is if they are welded okay how to do the connection yeah design column with two channel sections back to back design columns with two channel section place two to two then third one is design lacing system with welded connection so this completes the lacing part now we will take up the pattern okay design of pattern system we'll take up the problem design design a baton a baton system for the based column 10 meters long to carry to carry a fact factored load factored axial load of 3050 kN the column the column is restrained is restrained in position in position but not in direction but not in direction at both ends so it is means at the both ends the end condition shows that this is the hinge assume assume that the columns are assume the uh, or channels are the channels are kept back to back back to back say so this is the problem 
okay we'll design the basing sorry patterns how to design a patterns for that system okay. so here length is given 10 meters okay we use use two ismc the same channel section i'll take 300 channel section which is at 35.8 kg per meter that is the one so that we need not calculate the spacing all those things the same values from the last problem we can take okay from last problem we can take all those values from last problem we got s value as 183 that is spacing of channels back to back back to back how we got this we have taken ix should be equal to i y y isn't it so this yes he has been calculated the same method okay then and we also calculated for channels for channel channel kept back to back kept back to back what is kl by r minimum we got it as you can refer the same 84.74 so referring class number 7.7.14 of page 51 to get KL by R minimum. It is given increase by into multiplied by 1.1. So we multiply by 1.1 it becomes 1.1. I can put as effective 84.74 equals to 93.21 now okay we'll calculate the load carrying once you know the slenderness ratio this is lambda so slenderness ratio will keep referring Page 42 for buckling class class C taking FI as 250 for 90 because ours is 90.3 means I have to take 90 and 100 isn't it so 90 and 100 for 90 it is 121 for 100 it is 107 for 93.214 it is the fcd we got it as 116.5 newton per mm square so i'll calculate the load carrying capacity so the load carrying capacity of built up column <coughs> equal to PD equal to FCD into AG. If I calculate I'll get the load carrying capacity of the column that is one one six point five into 4, 5, 6, 4 is the area of each angle into 2. So this is 1063.41 which is greater than the load coming on it 1050 kilonewtons. So save. Now we go for the patterns. 
okay how the patterns are present <coughs> Now, first thing is spacing of battens. First step. So, referring class number seven point seven point three of page number fifty one. Seven point seven point three. Okay, seven point seven point fr two from there. It's a design of pattern. So we will then seven point seven point three where the spacing of patterns is given in pattern compression member where the individual members are not specifically checked for stress or bending moments. The spacing of pattern center to center of its fastenings shall be such that the slenderness ratio of any component over the distance shall be neither greater than 50 nor greater than 0.7 times the slenderness ratio of the member as a whole that is k l o divided by r y y should be less than 0.7 by times of r minimum of whole section that is the spacing. We will calculate KLO. Okay. KLO RYY is the R minimum here. So it should be less than 0.5 KL. This is the condition. So this should be less than 0.57 into Nine uh, ninety three point already we have calculated it ninety three point two one four two one four. I'll put the whole thing, the whole thing value is that into R Y Y. KLO uh, I will calculate. I will put this RYY here into RYY is uh, how much? Uh, 26.1. So this comes to 1305 mm. So this much is the spacing to be provided. So hence provide, hence provide battens at a spacing of one two five zero yeah. then second one size this is spacing what we got next one is size of end batons Assume the steps like this. Assume 20 mm diameter holes of grade 4.6. So we have taken the bolt size as 20 okay 